Today I'm going to show you how to do a compression gases test on a car. It's not the perfect example, but it's pretty close. First thing you want to do, what I meant to show you, was that the temperature is up to about operating temperature, getting warmed up pretty good. This one's leaking pretty bad, as you can see under there. Where the leak's coming from, I've located is, see it's dripping onto the starter. You've got this hose right here, and then you get back further, and it splits into two different hoses. So you've got this obnoxious black plastic that just falls apart as a splitter between the fat hose to the other. One's a bypass, and one goes up to uh, up behind the motor. So anyway, it overheated. The dealership diagnosed it as being a failed head gasket. What I've got is I've got the block testing fluid and it's blue and what you want to do is you want to warm up the car to operating temperature as I said to fill it up to fluid level. I was a little eccentric and overdid it. And it's been sitting in here for about two minutes now, uh, three minutes. It, what the idea is is that all the compression gases, uh, any HCs is what it tested for, hydrocarbons, will collect in the tank. Once it collects in the tank, you put in your bulb tester and you draw up fluid. And it's just like a, it's kind of like a check valve or uh, kind of like what those filters or uh, dispensers you see in an aquarium. I don't know what they're called. I'm struggling for words here. But anyway, what we do is we put the bulb in the top, it's pressed down, and when every time I squeeze this bulb, it's going to bubble up. And what it's doing is it's sucking. See, it's got a little check valve in the top of the bulb. Whew. But it sucks the fluid up into there, or the air, excuse me. And if the blue fluid turns green, you have compression gases. That's one of the signs of a failed head gasket. Another sign would be uh, milky colored oil, or if you drain the oil, say you pull out the oil plug, and when you pull it out, antifreeze comes out first, or if it's milky like chocolate milk, instead of being black or honey colored or any other kind of color that the oil is supposed to be, that would be a sign. Or if in here, if you're finding oil in here, that's a sign. If you're finding the, the mixture of gas, or the mixture of, I'm failing for words here. I don't know what my problem is. Basically, if you find chocolate milk colored goo in your oil, you've got a head gasket failure. If your tailpipe, now it's cold outside right now, so you should see a little bit of smoke, but if you see a lot of white smoke, if it's just dumping it out, you know, a little water condensation here is fine. Or if you take your hand like this, and you can see antifreeze, or you can smell antifreeze. In this case, I don't smell anything. Like I say, the dealership diagnosis is a failed head gasket, but I'm saying it's not. You look at the fluid, and it's just as blue as it ever was. I mean, there is no hint of yellow whatsoever. So, the fun thing about this is this is the dealership that diagnosis is the same one I used to work at. And I'll tell you what, they want, uh, they want to do the head gasket on this because it's a lot easier with the head off to replace that pipe, plus the teardown gives you time to get it in. So, you want to watch the temperature, uh, make sure you don't overheat it while you're doing this. But I'm going to say, I'm going to say that this is not a head gasket failure. In the winter time, and on my other video about head gasket failure, everybody's saying, you know, if you pull off your oil cap, and you've got all kinds of traces of chocolate milk and water swirl. See, this has just a very little, you know, not very much at all. Um, moisture in the air that can get in there through your PCV system can cause that. Um, that's not enough to warrant uh, replacing the head gasket. That can be there just incidentally. Now, if we had a ton of it in it, the whole thing's just covered and gooey with it, that's a sign of a head gasket failure. Also, look at this PCV right here. You see how that's wide open? Now tell me that water vapor from the air is not getting sucked into that. I mean, clearly it is. It's, so that's where your water vapor is coming from. This is not a head gasket failure. Um, 
We don't have any compression gases in it. We don't have any antifreeze going out the tailpipe. We don't have any mixture between the antifreeze and the water in the engine compartment. And we don't have any oil accumulating in the reservoir. So they were going to charge him a little over $2,000. And then he was going to go to a Japanese engine exchange place and pay $1,900. And it looks like he's not going to be paying any of that because he really doesn't need a head gasket. The other thing that he does need though, if you look back under here, you can see how it's all wet. He desperately needs a valve cover gasket, which is this, uh, this is your valve cover here where you see the bolts and stuff. He needs a valve cover gasket. He probably needs a tune up. It's running rough. And I'm willing to bet that his mass airflow sensor is contaminated and needs to either be cleaned or replaced. So to do all that and to fix the hose, and all of this stuff, I'm going to say it's going to be well under 500 bucks, and I think he's going to be in a great shape. It looks like to do the valve cover gasket, I may or may not have to pull the intake, so I haven't quoted out everything, but it's definitely going to be cheaper than a head gasket job that is not needed. Now, if they went through and they did the head gasket job, they're going to do the valve cover, they're going to probably replace the spark plugs, and a lot of that's all going to get done all at the same time, and it covers their butt to make sure <laughs> that the problem gets handled but you know I think that I'm going to be able to save them a lot of money sometimes when you try to save money <laughs> you don't <laughs> sometimes a shortcut is not the quickest best way but in this case I think that he's going to be in great shape so I'm going to move forward with that